in this crazy world. Hello, this is Eddie Hages with the Eddie Hages Tiny House Experience. In this video, I'm going to show you my design content that I'm selling on my website that I use to build this house and also get my ANSI 119.5 certification through Pacific West Association. I'm a CAD professional by trade, but I can't claim to be uh, an architect or um, an engineer or a, a licensed contractor. So uh, you'll still be liable for your own build um, and, uh, and responsible that you're using uh, proper construction methods per the permit that you're trying to um, fulfill or your local building codes. What I can say is this set of plans did go through Pacific West Association and in the long run um, was part of my certification process. So there is some validity, validity um, with this plan package. Uh, whether or not you buy my plans, I do recommend um, this book right here, Tiny House uh, Design, and Construction, uh, Design and Construction Guide. It was uh, my Bible. Throughout my build process, I probably read it literally probably like six or seven times. And I also bought Dan Luce's, um training videos for $50 for an entire year. Um, very, very worth it. And I bought his set of plans as my baseline, and I ended up um, just kind of... Uh, using them as a baseline and then redesigning them um, to fit the needs that I had uh, in a tiny house. So without further ado, let's jump into the design package. You'll receive a material list with my design package. This is, this will be in an Excel format um, and I have it broken down in different categories subcategories and the price of all the services and the materials that I use to build my tiny house with. This is the Pacific West Associates checkoff list that I use to get my ANSI 119 certification and this is one of their old checkoff lists and if you're gonna do uh, the certification with them um, you'll uh, receive a newer checkoff list. I've only included um, the the material information in the checkoff list and I deleted out a lot of the other pages that uh, break down the code but there's uh, a number of details of how I met different types of um, of the code requirement this is how I bolted down my subfloor to my trailer um, the types of insulation that I used in different places and a bunch of other uh, materials and um, installation methods. You'll find that in this PDF checklist. You'll also receive a 31 page PDF document with all of my plans. Those plans are formatted for 22 by 34 inch paper. You could take the PDF to a Repo Graphics company to get printed at full size, or you can simply print them at half size on 11 by 17 and they should still be fairly readable. Uh, in the plans, um, the sheets will contain a number of different dimensions, different note callouts. There'll be some photographs with some detailed information on construction methods, um, details of electrical, uh, electrical photos, um, and plumbing and gas. Uh, and it's everything that I used to build my house with as well as uh, submit for my certification process. You also receive a 3D PDF and I believe that you're going to need to download uh, this software that I'm using right now um, called Bluebeam. You can go to bluebeam.com to download a free 30 day trial and even when the trial expires you'll still be able to use the software as a viewer. You just won't be able to save uh, the PDF and any markups that you create in a session. I'm just going to go through uh, a couple of the tools that you can use in the um, the 3D viewer. So this toolbar should pop up when you open uh, the 3D PDF and there's a rotate tool in here and this will allow you to uh, rotate the model around. You can use your middle mouse button to scroll in to zoom in, scroll out to zoom out and hold it down to pan around. There's another cool feature uh, at this drop down called section or uh, show section um, box and when I click the section box there's these little arrows and I can drag them 
I can drag them up and down when I uh, grab one and this will show different sections of my house and it uh, makes viewing this 3D model a little easier and when I want to get out of the mode I simply just click that button again and one other feature to take advantage of uh, this right pane might not be open so if you click this little blue button um, you'll get some tools and it's probably not going to be shown when you in install Bluebeam but if you right click in this black area of this uh, right pane um, there's a little show feature and at the bottom a 3D model tree and this should pop up and if I click a component while this model tree is on it should highlight something in the model tree and in this case that window that I clicked says it's a 20 by 32 inch casement window um, there's a good bit of information associated with these 3D objects there's probably some gaps of information that uh, isn't as complete as it could have been but there should be a, a fair amount of information to utilize and check in this 3D model tree there is one other item in Bluebeam that I'd like to show you I'm gonna go back to my my sheet set and one of the the plan layouts uh, I'm in this overall plan um, all my sheets or uh, many of the sheets will have a scale associated with them this one says one inch equals one foot zero and in this right pane area under the measurement tool there's an area to uh, set the scale and this scale is actually set correct right now one foot or I'm sorry one inch equals one foot zero and I'm gonna click this little length tool up here and like uh, this fold up table there's no dimension that I included if I was curious what that dimension was I can click and find out what the dimension is and this says three foot zero four zero or three foot four inches and that's actually correct and uh, if you're creative with this software you could use it like a CAD software you kind of have to uh, reverse engineer it it's not quite as sophisticated as the CAD software but um, you can't trick it and make plan documents um, almost indistinguishable from uh, uh, a full CAD product and bluebeam.com they do have a very good one hour training tutorial video that I would recommend highly if you purchase my plans And the final file that you'll receive with my design documents is a Navisworks file. And Navisworks is a software used by uh, contractors, architects, and engineers to easily move through a 3D model. And there's a, a, a free viewer that you can download. Uh, if you Google Navisworks Freedom, it should take you to the Autodesk website where you can download. And once you download and install, there's a, a couple settings that you'll probably want to change under this application button in the top left uh, you're going to want to go to um, the options and then change your display units to uh, feet in inches fractions if uh, you're from America uh, but I guess if you're outside of uh, this country or um, or England you'll probably want to keep um, millimeters or another metric unit the other features that you're going to want to turn on is uh, found under this view tab and under this windows drop down um, turn on your selection tree and also turn on your saved viewpoints and you can see that a couple panes popped up this there's a little push button at the top of these panes that you can uh, you can dock them or undock them I'm gonna dock the saved viewpoints for a moment and I did save some viewpoints for you uh, and if you click on some of these views for instance the front outside this is going to take you to the door side of my house and I have some other views of the other sides of my house as well as some inside views and uh, you can use these buttons to quickly get to a different position in the tiny house model that I'm providing with the with the design package um, by this view cube uh, just above it there's a little home button and if you push that it's gonna bring you back out to this view so if you ever get lost within the model 
you could click um, the the home button as far as navigation goes I would recommend learning how to use this this walk function I believe this is the easiest way to move around in the model and uh, all of the functionality is either with the left mouse button or the middle mouse button when you have this invoked so if I hold down the left mouse button uh, if I move towards the screen it's gonna walk towards the model backwards will go away from the model and the left mouse button if I move left it's as if I'm turning my head to the left and same with to the right the middle mouse button if I scroll it towards the screen it's as if I'm looking down if I scroll towards me as if I'm looking up if I hold down the middle mouse button I take it towards the screen it's gonna elevate me up if I bring it back towards me elevate me down and middle mouse to the left versus the right is if, as if I'm uh, sliding on ice in the same plane uh, left or right and if you can get those movements down then um, moving around in this uh, model is going to be really simple especially if you have like first person shoot, in, shoot em up gaming experience you're not going to have any problem uh, and even if you don't have experience you might pick this up in, uh, in a couple hours a lot of people pick this the navigation up fairly fast it's, uh, fairly intuitive I'm gonna jump out to my home view again uh, this selection tree over here this breaks down all the components into different pieces so if I click on the trailer you can see the trailer light up down here I can also in this view if I right click one of these I can hide and it'll turn it off so uh, by hiding the trailer I can kind of see my plumbing a little bit better um, also if I have this selection this selected if I click a component it's gonna tell me what it is in this selection tree so I click the wall it just says generic four inch wall it's under the categories of walls uh, if I have all of the walls turned on I can turn that whole category off or hide it and now it's showing me uh, the studs that I have inside the house and um, if I right click that walls again I can unhide it as well as um, unhide the trailer and I get the complete model back so you can hide items and um, unhide them using the selection tree Another tool in the viewpoint tab is this enable sectioning tool. If um, you click this on, and I'm going to change this from planes to a box, it's going to bring up this little box right here. And the set of crosshairs, I can move this um, back and forth and drag different parts of this in and out. I'm going to try to get it by the arrows or these things. Um, I'm going to actually navigate to this side. Um, it takes a little while to get used to the sectioning, but you can kind of see, I can see different parts of the house without the walls. So it might be a, a useful tool um, to take advantage of to see different parts of this model and not have um, like things like the wall kind of blocking your view. And if you click the enable sectioning again, um, it'll take you uh, back out of the section box. And I'll click home and get back to uh, a regular view again. Uh, that's all I'm going to go over in this video. If you um, if you YouTube Navisworks Freedom beginner tutorial, you'll find a bunch of good um, information on this. But um, all of these materials, I hope uh, help help you make a decision on uh, what plans are going to work best for you and if you do choose to, to buy my plans you know exactly what you're going to get and whether or not they're going to help you with your tiny house building construction so thanks for watching this video because all we need is the power of love so we'll rise up above and set our souls free you ain't got nothing on me i'll say you ain't got nothing on